Matthew chapter 18. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Not the world, but in heaven. Jesus, who is the greatest? Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, the disciples. He's using a graphic illustration. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, change, repent, and become as little children, you must be born again. Ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And we're not talking about the church age. Children are innocent. Children are very trustworthy to others. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven, not salvation. And we don't even know the, the, the child's name. We don't even know if it's a boy or girl. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. Well, if that was salvation, you can, anybody who adopts anybody, I'll adopt this child in the name of Jesus Christ. That's not the way of salvation. Remember, we're before the gospel. We're in the kingdom age of preaching. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me. There is a strong warning that can take today. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck. This is the second time it's mentioned. And that he be drowned in the depths of the sea. A quick doubt. Only to be judged by God in, at the great white throne judgment. There is no judgment seat of Christ here. Not yet. And this guy would have been drowned in the ocean and appeared before the great white throne judgment and the books are open and he's judged by his works. What judgment do you think he'd get if he takes a child that believes in Jesus and turns him away? And yet that's exactly what the Mormons and the Jehovah Witnesses do. They'll find a young Christian. Well, we got another testament of Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus is not really who they say he is. Woe unto the world. Well, now this is the world. Because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man. By whom the offense cometh. Somebody is going to deceive children. That's what he just said. It better not be you. Somebody has been recorded in a Bible that will betray Jesus Christ. It better not be you. Somebody. See, God knows how we're going to die. Somebody will be, will be killed by a gun. It better not be you. That's offenses. Wherefore. If thy hand or thy foot offend thee, Matthew 5, cut them off. Now you're not going to do that in the church age. But look at the period of time we are in before Calvary. Listen, if you're going to sin, you better cut that body part off. We got 1 John 1 9. We got, we wrestle not against uh, uh, flesh and blood. David should have cut out his eyeball. And the other one, if he's going to keep looking at Bathsheba. Joab should have cut off his arms instead of killing somebody. Verse 8. It is better thee to enter into life halt or maimed, limping, or unable to do something, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. 
So read that verse to a Jehovah Witness. Let them flumber. Let them flip around like a fish on a pier. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. Remember he said in Matthew 5.28, A man looks upon a woman to lust out of his heart. He's already committed adultery. We are in a time right now, anybody commits adultery, that's it. There is no salvation. According to the law, pluck your eyeball out. It's going to give you trouble. Cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into something that Jesus never preached. See, verse 8, the Jehovah Witnesses will get about soul sleep, the grave, hell, fire. Well, hell is the grave. I've been funerals in my time. I've seen few. I've never seen him dig a hole and flames come out. Not yet. That hellfire preaching, really? Hellfire, pre yeah. What would Jesus for? Jesus would never preach about hell. He's the one that came up with the hellfire. That came from Jesus Christ. That's another one you can catch people on. Take heed that ye despise not one little children. Of these little ones for I say unto you Jesus saying that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my father which is in heaven now that verse would imply for children there is an angel protecting I'm not gonna say guardian angel that's the world term but if you've been a parent for any time, you got to realize that sometimes your children got into, or were going to get into some damage, some trouble, that had you not been alerted some way. There it is. That's all I'm going to say about that verse. Just leave it just like it is, as much as I can say. Now, this verse is it's removed from Bibles. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Well, I'm glad my Bible has that because I was lost. And now I'm found. Can you imagine someone singing Amazing Grace with that verse removed out of their Bibles? But you do know Amazing Grace doesn't have Jesus Christ in it at all either. That's why he's played that to all the funerals. We picked a hymn that doesn't have Jesus Christ. How think ye? If a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them go astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seeketh that which is gone astray? Now Peter says Jesus Christ is the great shepherd. We're going to talk about the church coming up in this chapter. How many people have gone astray from a church and the pastor had not gone after them? And bellied up, well, it's just a waste of time. And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoices more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. And the Bible says, God's not willing that any should perish. God is long-suffering. God does not want to send people into hell. Especially little ones. You better not grow them up in evolution and in atheism. Or Greek mythology or Roman mythology you're gonna get a big backlash from God of all if you turn children away from Jesus Christ that's why I try to say when I see somebody with children I'm in the street ministry I will say suffer the little children it is your job to bring your children to Jesus Christ moreover if thy brother shall trespass against thee he crosses the line. That's what it's saying. Trespass. He crosses the line. No trespass. Go and tell him his faults between thee and him. Alone. 
you got a problem with somebody you don't get on the telephone you don't get texting you don't go all around the church house you go to that person and if he shall hear thee thou hast gained thy brother reconciliation one-on-one -on -one. but he will not hear thee then take with thee one or two more people that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established that's how Deuteronomy 19 15 witnesses you got to have a witness before you go before a congregation you better have wit you better done verse 15 one on one if he won't listen you better now have witnesses and don't choose witnesses that are your best friends who are going to take your side and if he shall neglect to hear them tell it unto the church now the church is starting to come out chapter 17 chapter 18 now they're rejecting him now the church is coming but it ain't here yet let him be unto thee as the, an heathen gentile see as a heathen he's talking to a bunch of jews if he's not going to listen to you he's not going to listen to what let him be one of those, ew, those gentiles let him, be, let him as a heathen man and a publican. Like I said, that was the worst scum they had, according to them. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth, he's talking to the disciples, shall be bound in heaven. He's not talking to no pope. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. And this is the power he's given to the disciples. Because there is no complete Bible written in the book of Acts. James has to stand up in the council and say, you know what? These Gentiles are getting saved. We can't put the law on them. So they put a decree and God honored that decree. Both what the, the Gentiles can do and what they can't do. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven try that one go ahead try that one today he's not talking to us he's talking to the disciples they're gonna go out two by two by two Paul gets in a fight with the disciples over over Mark. He gets an agreement. He takes Silas and go, and I forget who takes Mark, and they go in that agreement and go start churches. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. He just said, get two, one or two witnesses more. I'm there with you guys. He's talking about a fellowship that can stand today. You get two or three people together in the name of Jesus Christ for the service of Jesus Christ, for the worship of Jesus Christ. There he is. Better realize that. Then came Peter to him. Uh-oh. Peter steps forward and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me that I forgive him till seven times? Now the rabbis, the rabbis only said three times. Peter doubles it and gives it one more. Proverbs 24, 16. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee, unto seven times. No, not seven, but unto seventy times seven, unlimited. That's what Jesus is saying. You're not sit there supposed to seventy times seven. You carry zero four four hundred ninety times. If somebody's gonna offend you four hundred and ninety times in one day, you don't need to be around that person, or you're America in two thousand sixteen. 
Everything comes out of someone's mouth. I'm offended. I'm offended. Get out of here then. Go find an offensive club and go join them. It's not meant to be, oh, 490. Okay, 489, one more time, and I'm not going to forgive you. It's not that. It's unlimited. Now he's going to give Peter a little illustration. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven, not church, not New Jerusalem, liken unto his. Now we can apply these things to our life and to the church, liken to a certain king. Which would be Jesus Christ in the millennium, which would take an account of his servants. When he had begun to reckon, count up, tally, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, he couldn't pay the debt. His Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. That was a Roman law. You couldn't pay your debt, your whole family would go and work in a debtor's prison, or be, slowed, be sold as slaves and servants, and the money earned would be going to that debt. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, and saying, Lord, have patience with me. I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion. Shows you Jesus Christ, doesn't it? And loosed him and forgave him the debt. Now that's not really the story there. That's not the main issue of this, this story that Jesus is telling us. Guy had a big debt. Jesus said, okay, I forgive you. I relieve you of that debt. But the same servant, the one that couldn't pay, was forgiven. Went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. This microscopic to what he owed. And he laid hands on him, took him by force. And took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Wow. This guy, this servant, does not owe any no, no more money. And he goes out and grabs the first person he sees that owes him money, takes him by the throat, and roughhouses him. Now pay me. Something that doesn't even comprehend to what his debt was. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet, like this guy did. And besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay thee. Now look at verse 27. I'm 26 again. Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. It's almost the same words. And he would not. Read verse 27. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Verse 30. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. Well, verse 25. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, his wife, his children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me. I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him, him the debt. And he casts this guy into prison to pay his little debt. Isn't that remarkable? This story is about two consequences. Judge you not, judge ye, well, I can't say the verse now. Judge not, least you be judged. And then you forget the rest of the verse. This guy was judged. I forgive you. I'm sorry. Go, I relieve you of your debt. Now he goes out 
and he has someone who owes him a debt, and he is forceful, he is, he is binding, he is attacking, he throws him into jail. Now we're going to learn what that judge not leaves you be judged. Then his Lord, after he had called him, ooh, come here, servant, and said to him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all thy debt, because thou desirest me. Verse number 26. Shouldest not thou also have compassion? Read verse 27. On thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee, I showed you mercy. I gave you grace. What are you doing? I'm going to judge you now by what your standards of judgment is. You ready? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors that till he should pay all that was due unto him. You didn't show that guy any mercy? I removed my mercy off of you. You go to jail. You pay your debt in the fullest. Why? Because this guy was forgiven. This guy show, was shown mercy, and he went out and did not. Now, if I can find that verse over here, judge not least to be judged. You know, people quote that verse, and they've got to be very careful of what the verse says, the contents. It's in here somewhere. Chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. This servant was shown mercy by his Lord. He was shown grace. At the next opportunity he had to do a favor, he showed them roughness, he showed them judgment, and he showed them no compassion. Judge not least you be judged. All right. You owe your debt. It's not unforgiven. You're going to jail to it's all paid. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. If ye from your hearts get that. It's not just lip service. From your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespass. That's a big that's a big statement. And he's already talked about the church and Peter stepped up and asked the question. Peter, I don't know if he's looking to you know, I got somebody in mind. I don't know. And Jesus says, Listen, I have shown you guys mercy. I have shown you guys grace. You better go out there and multiply. That's what that is. 70 times 7, that's multiplication. This guy, when he walked up to this one that owed him little, little twinkets of money. Oh, brother, I, you know, let me tell you what happened. I stepped before that Lord over there. And you, you know how much, yeah, I heard how much you, you owe a house, a mortgage, and a car payment, and a, and a, a school loan. And <clears throat> what happened? You know, he forgave me everything. Told me I didn't have to worry about no more. You owe me, what was it, five hundred dollars with that thing? You yeah. But I'll tell you what. Since he showed me such great mercy, I'm going to forgive you your debt. Just wipe it off. You don't owe me that five whatever it is five whatever it is. You don't owe me. And if you ever need money again, come see me and I'll help you out. That would be even more blessed. That would be even more help than what that guy got. No, but he goes out there, he wrings his neck and throws him in prison. And that's where he ends up. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. What sober man soweth, that he shall also reap. Now, he said... 
verse 34, till he should pay all that was due unto him. You know what this guy's going to have to do in jail now? Now they're counting the nickels, and I don't think they use nickels, but American standard, he's going to count the nickels and the pennies. Hey, I, I paid off. No, you still got 22 cents left. Oh. All of it. By the way, that little debt that that guy owed you, yeah, well, he, he's been out of prison two or three years ago. Oh, where's the money that he owed, him, owed me? I, it went to your debt. <laughs> How's that? How's that? If God showed you grace and mercy, return the favor.